All right, Ram Bronico here for you, everyone. Willie P, I see you, so you're up first. You see me, I see Brand. How are you, pal? I'm doing all right. How you doing? I'm good. Um, what's the mood around the team been like over the last week, weekend, and in, in terms of how they're responding to uh, what happened in Real Salt Lake? Um, yeah, obviously everybody's disappointed with the result and and how we played. Um, we really wanted to bring, you know, three points back. Um, unfortunately, we didn't. But you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, that's over now. Uh, we need to learn from our mistakes, what we didn't do well, and and we need to correct those and and do the things we do do well better going into this weekend against Colorado. If you could try to pinpoint what's missing, what are some of the things you guys are not doing that you need to do better or need to at least improve upon? Um, I think, you know, we're not, we're not executing consistently, um, you know, in, in parts of the game, I thought, I thought we did well and how we defended and, and, and moved in our shape really. Um, and then in other times we, we got a little too disorganized, whether that was from uh, confusion or tired legs or, or whatever it was. Um, but we we need to execute consistently for 90 minutes, and and that's what uh, we lacked in Salt Lake. And uh, for me personally, and uh, last one for you personally, in terms of uh, playing, you were more in a, a deep six role from what you have been in the past. I know you played the pivot this year, and obviously you've also had some time going forward. What was it like being back in that defensive midfield role for the first time in a while? Because I know that that was the role that you kind of played for a lot of time last year. Yeah, I mean, it, of course, you know, I, I'm used to the position. So when I was back in there, I felt a little more comfortable. But at the same time, I haven't been there, you know, this year really at all. Um, so it was more about like, you know, kind of developing rhythm and, and being comfortable in, in that uh, situation and position again. Thank you. All right, let's go, Steve. Hey, Brant. Um, you're active on social media. And, you know, after a game, especially a loss, there's a lot of chatter from, you know, the, the best armchair managers in the world who all know how to fix the issues of, of Charlotte FC. Because you're online and you probably can't miss a lot of this stuff, how do you, you know, personally process, you know, a lot of the negative feedback uh, and things like that? And, and, and the same with the positive stuff. I mean, how do you uh, take it not too seriously or, you know, how do you weight it on how you process the social media? Um, for me, it's pretty easy. You know, I, first off, you know, I like to, I control what I can control. And at the end of the day, you know, that's really, that's really kind of the foundation of, of how I go about my, my things and, and what I do. Um, and then the second, you know, opinions are the cheapest commodities on the planet, right? I could, I could pick up a penny and it's worth more than somebody's opinion. Um, so, you know, when it comes to that, it's like, I don't put too much weight on, you know, what other people say or what other, what other, what other people think, you know, it's more about, you know, how can I, how can I be better? How can I, you know, do more and, um, and help, help, help the team the best that, that I can. And what, and, and what are some of the things that you're doing to, to do that? Cause I mean, this is, Charlotte FC has been uh, a, a whole different level in your professional career as far as minutes and, and action and responsibility and, and leadership, too, with everything like that. Um, how are you personally, uh, you, know, you know, upping your game to improve the overall squad? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that I do. Um and that I feel that I need to, I need to take the responsibility to do, right? Like, there's a leadership part. There's an on the field part. Uh, there's a locker room and culture part. Um, I like to read, read books about, uh, you know, how, what great leaders did, you know, to inspire, inspire other, other, you know, whether it's players or, you know, back, back when it was like, you know, a lot of wars going on, how great leaders um, inspired their guys and their teams. Um and then I like to watch a lot of players that play at a higher level than, than I do and, and kind of, you know, take and learn what, you know, what I can, what I can take from that. You know, if I watch, uh, you know, Byron plays Man City today, you know, I watch those kind of guys and see what I can do. And then obviously there's a part where you come in and you apply, you lead by example, right. You know, attitude and effort, we can control that. I come in, 
you know, I try to have the best attitude and effort that I can have to try and, you know, lead by example and then apply that to the field. You know, also there's a technical part where uh, I work on, you know, my technique and, and what I need to do better and, and do more on the field. Okay. I guess the, the most important and the last question I would have today is uh, you were Clay Demick who did the uh, mullet hawk first because word I'm getting from in the independence camp is that he did it first. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it might've been me, but Clay's in a good way right now. So I'll let him have it. Mm -hmm. But you guys are good friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're best friends. Well, that's, even better than good um and things like that and because yeah, he um you know scored a goal the last home game was able to show that uh you know he and his wife are expecting again um with that you you i've seen you at uh, independence games do you keep a strong relationship with uh, a lot of those guys there uh yeah i mean some of the guys i play with i, I feel like um clay is the main guy just because we formed a relationship and and became such good friends uh, when we were playing together. Okay. Well, thanks. Good luck. Thanks. All right. Let's go to Brian. Afternoon, Brian. How are you doing? How's it going? Good, man. Good. Um, so Latanzia specifically mentioned in the in the post match presser that he felt like RSL kind of uh, beat y'all out for for when it came to energy and passion in this last game, um, and that y'all kind of had. Um, had a discussion about that uh, post match. Um, do you mind kind of um, maybe this giving us your thoughts on 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 that kind of response in the post match, and also maybe uh, how how things went and been hashed out since, uh, and how you know, I guess going into more detail, similar to how how Will asked about how things are feeling in, in the locker room and as a team right now. Yeah, I mean, first off, you know, Latanzio was right. Uh, I feel like, in the, especially in the second half. You know, RSL had much more energy. Uh, they kind of rode that momentum. Um, and, you know, ultimately, I think we kind of folded. You know, we kind of showed a weak mindset, um, which is which is never acceptable, never appropriate, um, especially at this level. Um, that being said, you know, like I said earlier, we need to have that next game, next play mentality, whereas, you know, we need to correct those mistakes and you know, it's okay to make mistakes, but it's not okay to make mistakes, you know, two or three times, right? You need to learn from your mistakes and you need to show, you know, what you can do in your control that you do it to the best of your ability. And um, so there was a time last season when, when after Latanja took over during August and going into the, the beginning of September when y'all lost about five, I think it was like five of six games from around uh, when y'all played LAFC. So when y'all lost to Cincinnati, it was like a five, I think y'all won against New York away. But that was like the only win for like pretty much that entire month and going into September. Um, and I feel like at that time, similar response from the fans, a lot of, a lot of uh, hashing out, a lot of anger, um, a lot of frustration. Um, do you see any similarities to how the team uh, uh, was, was dealing with sort of those that that struggle of results at that time to, to how the season has started this year and then how do you how did you because y'all finished really strong last year how did y'all kind of get out of that rut and do you feel like there's a similar kind of um need in coming together to get out of the rut now yeah i mean kind of right i mean before the salt lake game we were three games unbeaten yeah, um, yeah. which is not i mean that's not an easy thing to do in this league yeah. Um, so I don't know if it's like necessarily as similar as like, maybe there's just more doom and gloom about our second half performance against Salt Lake is what I really think it, it's about. Um, that being said, you know, we're not, we're obviously not taking that result like lightly. Um, we're working hard this week, right? We wanted to, we really want to turn things around and, and, you know, start that momentum of, of wins and ties and picking up points, whether it's home or away. Um, and that's also, that's ultimately what we're focused on is just, you know, what we can do against Colorado this weekend. And then uh, last question for me, um, last year and, and also at times this year, you and Jones specifically have had played a, a decent amount. I feel like, I mean, obviously results come from the entire team, all 11 on the field, coaching staff, everybody, the subs and everyone. But um, at uh, when y'all, y'all as a team found a decent amount of success, uh, was, it seemed when J you and Jones were both on the field together in the midfield, um, what uh, between the two of you, do you feel like is sort of like, 
why why do you all seem to work well together? What on your in your end? What do you what do you feel is like? How do you guys work well together? Um, I think we complement each other uh really well. Um, just because I kind of have that engine and and uh, DJ is more of that uh you know destroyer, but can also it's technical. Like he can keep the ball very well. Um, and we can pass and move off of each other. Uh, we talk a lot to each other about like what we can improve and how we can help each how we can help each other um, off the field. Even when one is starting and one of us isn't starting, um, we're always uh, supportive and helpful. And I think that uh, you know strengthens our relationship um, when we're not when we're not on the field together. But then when we do play together, I feel like we can read each other well. And and uh, I don't know, we just kind of have that uh, that that connection. Uh, really, you know, we're kind of like minded and and we want what's best for the team. Awesome. Thank you, Brent. Good luck this weekend. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Brian. Uh, let's go to Caleb to finish it up. Hey, what's up, Brent? What up? Just, just wanted to to ask you about y'all have been gone now for two weeks, playing away twice in a row. How does it feel about to come back home? And what's something you want to demonstrate to the fans this weekend? Yeah, no, we're pumped. We're pumped to get back home. Um and I mean, I feel like, you know, this weekend we really need to make a statement of, of the team that we that we really are. I mean, we are a good team. We have a lot of really good players. Um, and I think we can we can do something special with this group. You know, I believe in in this in these coaches. I believe in my teammates. I, I really I really think we can achieve uh, great things together. Um, but it's really just about, you know, getting results and putting it together on the field. And that's what we want to do. Right. Appreciate it. Good luck this weekend. Thanks. All right. Let's go to Mike to finish it. Hey, Brent, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, the, uh, I, I, I got in late, so I apologize if you if you touched on this, but that six-minute stretch against Salt Lake, is that that's completely out of character for you guys, but how do you use that as fuel for going to the ne these next two home matches? Yeah, I mean, like I, I did uh, touch on this a little bit, it's about to just, you know, correcting our mistakes, and, you know, you're right, it is definitely out of character, um, and now we need to make sure <laughs> that doesn't happen again, obviously um positional wise you know we were able to go over it and and see where we went wrong and what and what we did wrong um defending our own our own goal um and ultimately use that to help us going into Colorado and just as a follow-up because Christian after the game was uh was pretty terse in some of his comments with the media um what is Christian like when he's unhappy um I mean of course, you know, everybody is unhappy at times, but he's still very professional. Um, he and ultimately, you know, he wants he wants the best out of us um, from us and and for this team and club. Um, he pushes him. So he pushes us hard. Um, but that's because he, he loves and cares about us and, and how we do. So even when he when he's unhappy, he's still very professional and and pushes us to be our best. Does it, does it bother you guys internally? Like, man, we really ticked them off by the way we played. We got we got to be better. Yeah, of course. I mean, the, look, we always want to we always want to do our best. We always want to be our best. Um, we didn't do well against Salt Lake, and now we need to correct that. And we need to go and do well against Colorado. And that's it. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mike. All right, we'll finish it there. Thanks, y'all.